So in this chapter, we will introduce representation theory, which is uh, a very important part of the group theory. So uh, the table of contents of uh, this chapter consists of, so first we will introduce the representation of a group, the definition of uh, representation. Then we'll introduce reducible, the concept of reducible and irreducible representation. And then we'll introduce Schur lemma and associated theorems. Finally, the great orthogonality theorem and the character table. So how to construct the character table. So which is the most essential <coughs> uh, part of uh, group theory. So basically, so all that we will introduce in our chapter is to lead us to this to the construction of the character table, right? So all the mathematics involved here are just to lead us to this main result. All right. So first of all, I will introduce the representation of a group. So what's a representation of a given group? So we call a representation of a group uh, that we denote by gamma of G, a nomomorphism into, uh, of G into the subgroup of linear transformation in a vectorial space R. So what does this mean? This means that we represent each elements of a group by a matrix and this matrix okay acts on a vector space okay in a vector space okay r so basically so if we have a group here g equals e a b c right so each element of G is represented by a matrix that I note gamma of A for B, gamma of B, etc. Such as this representation is a homomorphism. This means that the matrix associated to the product A multiplied by B is the ma matrix associated by A to A multiplied by the matrix associated to B. All right? And the matrix associated to the neutral elements is the identity and the matrix associated with uh, uh, the elements the inverse of an element is the inverse of the matrix itself so this is uh, the concept of a representation now i'll give an example of a representation of the triangle okay, in uh, the 2D vectorial space. And now we will give an example of the representation of the symmetry group of the equilateral triangle in uh, the Cartesian space uh, R2. So in R2, so each point here is represented by a coordinate, so x, y, okay? Uh, and each of the symmetry group, uh, the symmetry elements of the um, equilateral triangle, okay, is represented by a matrix or by, by a matrix that acts on this point x, y, and transform it into another point x, y, x prime, y prime. So for the equilateral triangle, we had here uh, six elements. So the identity, the rotation of two pi over three, the rotation of four pi over three, right? The reflection sigma one around this axis, the reflection sigma two and the reflection sigma three. So now each of these elements will be represented by 
a linear transformation in R2 in this case and uh, so basically for example for a rotation of an angle theta okay, is represented by a matrix cosine theta cosine theta minus sinus theta sinus theta okay this means that a rotation of an angle theta apply on x y will transform it into x prime y prime such as x prime is equal to cosine theta x <coughs> cosine theta x minus sine theta y sine theta x plus cosine theta y all right so now for the rotation of 2 pi over 3 c3 okay now for, first for the identity the identity the representation of the identity so gamma of e is the the representation of the neutral element sorry is the identity matrix is one one zero zero all right which is the same thing than the rotation of two pi now if we consider the rotation of two pi over three so a rotation the representation of the rotation two pi over three in this uh, in this Cartesian space uh, x y so is given by cosine 2 pi over 3 cosine 2 pi over 3 minus sine 2 pi over 3 sine 2 pi over 3 okay, which is equal to minus half minus half minus square root of 3 over 2 minus square root of 3 over 2 sorry plus square root of 3 over 2 all right so So now, uh, for the representation of C3 square, so it's the same thing, basically, it's uh, the matrix rotation of 4 pi over 3 here, all right? So it's cosine 4 pi over 3, cosine 4 pi over 3, which gives me, so minus half, minus half still, and a square root of 3 over 2 minus square root of 3 over 2 okay okay now let's consider uh for the element sigma 1 so the sigma one, the reflection around um, around the axis sigma one, all right, you transform x y into if I make. So I will get this point here, x prime, y prime, right? Which is basically x prime is equal to minus x and y prime is equal to y. So this means that the matrix association to sigma one in this vector space is equal to 
minus 1, 1, 0, 0. Now, if I want sigma 2, uh, same thing, I will take a point here and then I will have this point here. And I can, by geometrical considerations, I mean, determine the matrix associated to sigma 2, right? But <clears throat> I can also use the multiplication tables. So, if I want the matrix associated to sigma 2, I can uh, look at the multiplication table and I see that, for example, um, C3 multiplied by sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2. So the matrix associated because representation is an amorphism, I can say that the matrix associated to sigma 2 is the matrix associated with the products of C3 by sigma 1, which is the same thing that the matrix associated to C3 multiplied by the matrix associated to sigma 1. And if I multiply these two matrices, then I will get 1 half, 1 half minus squared 3 over 2, and minus squared. Two. Sorry, minus one half. Right. Now the same thing. If I want the matrix associated to, for example, sigma three, I can say that. Uh, <coughs> so sigma three is equal to uh, c three square. Uh, uh, c three square multiplied by sigma one. Right, so C3 squared divided by C1 gives sigma 3, so I can construct the matrix associated to sigma 3 by multiplying the matrix with corresponding to C3 square and sigma 1. Right, so I get, I get the matrix associated to sigma 3 is equal to. Um, half minus half square t over 2 square root of 3 over 2 all right so now the ensemble of all these matrices corresponding to um, each of these elements of the group form a representation of the group because it's a nomomorphism and it's a representation in the vector space x, y, all right? But in general, a representation is not necessarily a representation in a Cartesian okay, space. It can be a representation in a space Rn of dimension n, where, for example, can be the representation uh, in the space of the wave functions in quantum mechanics, etc. So any way of attributing, um, of representing each element of the group by a matrix, such as this representation is an homomorphism, is a representation. All right? And the size of uh, this representation depends on the size of the vectorial space okay that is associated with and now i will introduce the notion of a faithful representation so a representation is said to be faithful if to each element each element correspond a uh, unique uh, matrix in this representation this means that if two elements are different uh, there is two different ma matrices that correspond to each of the elements. So, for example, in the in the previous uh, pre uh, representation of the equilateral triangle in the R two space, uh, so basically this is a phase for representation because to each element corresponds a different uh, matrix. 
Now, let's introduce the notion of equivalent representation. So, two representations are said to be equivalent. So, two representations that I note gamma of g and gamma, pre, uh, gamma prime of g, of g. So, gamma and gamma prime are said to be equivalent if they are identical up to a transformation of coordinate. Okay. Now, mathematically expressed, this means that there exists a matrix S such as no matter what the elements A belong to G, gamma prime of A is equal to S gamma of A S minus 1. So we will show this, okay, um, that if existed transformation of coordinate, okay, then that brings a system of coordinate to, to another that, that the, the new representation in the new coordinate is S gamma S minus 1. For example, in the pre previous representation of the equilateral triangle, if we take any transformation of coordinate, for example, a rotation of an angle theta, okay, and you express the matrix of this uh, corresponding to this uh, rotation, and then you make S, okay, so the matrix S is the matrix of transformation of coordinate, okay? So cosine, cosine theta, cosine theta minus, minus sine theta, sine theta. And then uh, the, the new matrix corresponding to, to the element A is S comma S minus one. All right, so now an important uh, notion also is the notion of character of representation. So the uh, the character of an element A in the representation gamma denoted by chi of A is the trace of the corresponding matrix in this representation. So chi of A is the trace of gamma of A. Now we have the two important following properties. Is that two equivalent representation have the same characters. Okay. We will also prove that. And two elements of a same class have the same character. All right. So this, these are two important properties that we will prove. And now I will show you that if there exists a transformation of coordinate, if we make a transformation of the coordinate with the matrix S, which is the matrix of transformation of coordinates, then the representation of the element uh, A, gamma of A, is transformed into a matrix gamma prime, okay, such as gamma prime is S gamma S minus 1, all right? So for all the matrices of all the, the elements okay, of the group, they are related okay, by this uh, formula. So basically, it, it's transformation of coordinate okay, is corresponds, like if we have, okay, so a point, a vectorial space, Okay, R. Okay, so let's say gamma is a representation in the vectorial space R was X a vector in this vectorial space. Okay. Okay, so R here is the vectorial space. Doesn't mean it's, it's not the, the, the real numbers, right? So basically, if you You make gamma of a by x. Now I will note for simplicity, I will note the matrix gamma of a by big A, right? So gamma of a is the representation of the element a, right? In the representation gamma. I will note it, I will note it as big A. Alright. So this matrix big A 
transform a vector x okay into let's say a vector y here right or a vector x prime so into another right vector of the same space all right <clears throat> now the transformation of coordinates so if you make a transformation of coordinate for example you rotate your coordinates by an angle uh, uh, theta or etc so basically this transformation of coordinate is uh, associated with a matrix x so uh, with a matrix s so basically this transformation of coordinate acting of on x changes x as another vector x prime and when it acts on the vector y here it transform it transforms it into another vector y prime all right so now i can rewrite right uh, y is equal to ax i change x into if i multiply s minus one here okay so s x is s minus one multiplied by x prime so it's a s okay uh, minus one multiplied by x prime now if you do the same thing for um, so y prime is equal to s y so it's equal to s a s minus one multiply by x prime so this means that this is the the value of the, the this is the vector y in the new coordinates this is the vector x in the new coordinates so it's the vector x prime the vector x and the vector y in the new coordinates okay are related by s a s minus one instead of a right so this matrix a prime in the new coordinate or I will note it gamma prime of a okay? so same thing right <coughs> is s gamma of a s minus one so when you make a transformation of coordinate you rotate your all your coordinate for example okay or you apply the matrix s onto your coordinate okay the matrices in this coordinate okay a matrix will be transformed as if it's matrix A, it will be transformed as S A S minus one. Okay, the vector will be transformed as S X or S Y, but a matrix will be transformed as S A S minus one. All right. So basically, now if exists a transformation of coordinates that bring gamma into gamma prime, this means that okay, we call these two representation to be equivalent okay so two equivalent representation are identical after a transformation of coordinates 